Well, this next gentleman that I'm about to introduce has an extensive resume of professional achievements, and uh, he is a member of the PRCA. He is also a graduate alum of Northwestern. He, uh, as a member of the PRCA, uh, he knows what it feels like to stand in the winner's circle as a stair wrestler, as a tie-down roper, and as a team roper, I believe. Uh, but now he is helping our students, our radio athletes, step into that winner's circle, and he has really had a lot of accomplishment there. And I am proud to introduce to you the radio coach from Northwestern, Stockton Graves. Well, so I got to think about last time I did this, it was kind of a Q&A deal, so I was hoping you guys would help me out and <laughs> answer questions. But just to start off, yep, I'm Stockton Graves. I'm the head rodeo coach at Northwestern. Uh, I think this is my fifth year uh, to be coach. And uh, just a little bit about the rodeo team. I think uh, now, I just counted today, there's probably around 115 on the roster. We have about 80 uh, competing members. We have some fifth years and then we have some non-competing. Uh, the, we've had a lot of success this year. Uh, right now, we're about a little under halfway through our season, and uh, the men's team's winning the region, which consists of schools in Kansas and Oklahoma. And the women's team are third right now, and they're only about 50 points out of first, so uh, very, very easily could win the region as well. So that's something we're proud of. Uh, we kick off this spring uh, in Manhattan, Kansas, on February 16th at K-State. And then we go from there to Fort Scott, uh, Kansas, also to Garden City, then down to Weatherford, Hayes, and end up at Gaim. Um, we have six rodeos in the fall, and then of course on, in June, uh, the top three in each event and the top two teams get to go to Casper to the college finals. So that's kind of like our Super Bowl of college rodeo. So um, myself, uh, John pretty much said it all there. So. <laughs> uh, I do still rodeo a little bit professionally, um, but um, mainly just right here around and close. Um, it does help our recruitment process, it seems to, uh, to get a little more exposure from Northwestern on a national basis, and uh, that helps me out quite a bit recruiting. So um, I guess uh, I guess we'll start with the questions right now. So. Yes. Seems to me like for the school the size of Northwestern to have the size of Valley that you've done away with the job with the rodeo team, and I'd just like to thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I thank you. I I don't know. I we've uh, I mean we've been successful for since I went to school here, and uh, I just tried to continue that, you know. And uh, luckily, I've been able to do that. I've had a lot of good kids come through here and go on and be successful after college as well as in college. So that all transitions back, you know, and helps in the recruiting process and everything like that. So that's that's what we try to do. Yes. Are you uh, an advisor for the new arena project or have you been involved in that? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I had a guy come by the office the other day and, and, and mm -hmm. asked me my thoughts. It looks pretty good, you know, that was my thought. Um, at, um, I, I uh, off and on, you know, when they when they got something to ask me, they asked me, you know, other than that, you know, that's about it. But uh, yeah, I, I did see the plans for it. it looks looks pretty neat. North, Northwestern is one of the authority right. groups. Uh, I'm filling that role right now oh, okay. with uh, input from. Sorry. Um, yeah. Has, has a site been chosen for that? Uh, yes, there should be some information coming out very quickly. Okay. So it's not yeah, I think a deed was signed in before the end of December. Oh, okay. So, that man can pray anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy you want to talk to. Hey, I just said, had the deed been signed and. Did you have a question? Yeah. When you're recruiting, what are the main pros and cons? I tell you what, and it the recruitment pro yeah the recruitment process for me was a learning process. I, you know, had really no experience in it, but you know we jumped right in, and uh, I tell you what I do. You know we welcome everybody, and uh, but as far as recruiting, I kind of look. And I'm not discriminatory by no means. I mean, everybody's welcome. 
but I look and see who what kids are going to fit right here in Northwestern in Alva, you know, in this community. Okay, and those are the kids I pursue that I know are going to be good, good Samaritans to the community, as well as successful in the classroom and in the arena. Okay, because those are three things that I feel like are very important. Um, which a lot of times, as you know, I mean, sometimes it doesn't matter how successful they are if they're not the other two. It just really doesn't pan out for me and really for the community much. So we try not to, to go that way. Um, but recruitment process, um, we go to the national high school finals and they have basically one of our biggest ones is like the, they have a uh, college fair that day. And you sit there from eight in the morning till five in the evening and talk to 300 kids or more. And you get those emails and everything and then you put that out and then that goes all over the United States, Hawaii, Canada, Australia, everywhere and then they, you get the return you know from them and then you just go through the recruitment process as far as that goes. <coughs> so um, that's kind of how we broaden our base you know is right there because it's all nationally and then as far as like the what's helped a lot is like JD struckness obviously you know being at the NFR being on national TV for 10 nights in a row uh, myself all the other graduates from Northwestern, they mention that on TV and, P and then kids see that, they're watching that and they get, they, they register, oh, those guys, you know, are at the top of the level of rodeo and came through Northwestern. And hopefully that falls back on us and I get calls from that too. So that's how we do a lot of it. It's not, I mean, I, I never recruited football players or anything like that, but it's, it's not quite like that. You know, I want kids that want to be here and want to come here and are going to stay for the four years and get their degree and you know because even in the professional ranks they're not like the professional ranks of football or basketball you know, the rodeo you're not going to go make millions of dollars you know so the degree is very very important um, when you're done rodeoing as I found out my degree was very important that I had you know and I stress that to the kids so that's what I look at as far as recruits. I want them to come in and be good people and fall right in line in the community. And I think for the most part we have. And also to just get better every day and be successful. And then obviously, you know, get their degree and graduate. Yes? Yeah, uh, Stockton, you might, you might tell them a little bit that the, the collegiate rodeo, if I, if I understand right, maybe is the only NCAA collegiate sport where the athlete go make money. Well, <clears throat> so yes. So they leave it every every Thursday night, Friday morning because they got rodeo. Somewhere. Right. I mean, it, yeah. Sure. And th and that's it. Like it's we're not NCAA. We're NIRA, which is, but we we are amateur athletes as well mm -hmm. as professional athletes. Unlike the every NCAA, other sport. yeah, every other sport they can't do that. Um, <clears throat> so that's it. Like a lot of these young men and women not only are college rodeoing but they're also professionally or amateur or anything like that rodeoing as well and i don't discourage that because it's something i did now we come here we get scholarships we college rodeo first that's obvious but in the summertime and on weekends that they have off that we don't have college rodeos they're usually at some at a rodeo yeah, yeah somewhere so it's a it's a source of income for them and um you know, also it, it just, I like it because it just keeps them fresh, you know, it keeps them always competitive, and that helps a lot when it comes to college rodeo. Yes? What's the qualifications for being able to board your horse and thing out north? You have to be one of the 80 that's actively on the roster? Out here, out the cell barn? Yeah. Really, right now, I have about four, four students that work for me. And that's part of their deal. Uh, they get to live out there and keep their horses out there. We're currently working on plans to put some stalls and runs out there. But right now, most of them either board at separate locations or at the fairgrounds. But there's, uh, yes. Uh, talk to me about the international students versus uh, what percentage of that is part of the rodeo team? How have they gone on? Um, we so m most of our international students are from Canada. We have most of them are from Alberta. Some of them uh, Quebec and stuff. 
Um, but they they basically just you know call down you know and I mean just like any other student would. Um, there's really not a whole lot of difference. You know, if they get their visa and everything like that, their student, you know. But as far as the percentages, we have a very low percentage. Um, I think right now we might have three or four. We've had up to ten in the past, um, but some have grad. Most have graduated, and um, some didn't make it. But um, we do. I got a girl right now calling me from Hawaii. So she's not really international, but she's not from you know, right here anyway. So I was thinking maybe we might uh, schedule a recruiting trip to Hawaii or something like that. I don't know, throw that in there. That happens, Michael. That cold snap, you bet that cold snap comes in, we might have to go to, we got to get more kids from Hawaii, we do. So. But um, yes. You call it NIRA? Yep, it's National Intercollegiate Rodeo Association. That's our association. Kids buy a membership that every year, and it most of the membership goes towards insurance, and then some goes towards the actual entity itself, the Naira, to keep that thing running. And it's been around since I think the 50s, so um, been around a long time, and um, it's really a good thing, you know, for for students to get to go to college and get scholarships. You know that maybe are not going to get scholarships playing football or basketball or band or you know or even academic wise so it's just it's that much more important um, and then it gets just you'll see those kids come through college and funnel right on to the professional ranks most of them you know so Stockton, how many people from Northwestern uh, were in the national finals there was three this year uh, team Roper um, I just was thinking his name this morning and I always forget it, and I don't know why. He was here before I was. Um, Nick Sartain? No, no, Sartain, he didn't make it this year. He cut his thumb off. I was thinking about this <laughs> this morning. Um, golly. Kyle Irwin. Yeah, Kyle Irwin is a steer wrestler. He graduated my first year as a coach, and then Struxon is, is still a fifth year right here. Um, but I'm trying to think of that. Jake Long um, did go here for a year. He healed at the NFR, so I guess four. Who is the boy? That was B. Struxness, probably, that goes to school here. Yeah, yeah JD. JD. This year and last year. Yeah, he had two real good years. Uh, he's a good kid. He's from Minnesota. Uh, his cousin comes to school down here. I think his brother's going to come down next year. So. He won the college. Yep, he was our national champion last two years ago. Two years ago with our runner-up national championship team. So in, in 15, 16, 15. So it's kind of, but... Uh, Yep, that's JD. He's still here. He li he's one of the guys that lives up the cell barn and does things for me. And he don't get no special treatment. Just <laughs> <laughs> he probably gets treated worse. Anyway. That's why I tell him, so you win one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. You don't need that. <laughs> I ain't paying you to do this. You know. <laughs> How many states do you think are represented by the radio? Oh wow! I, I number wise, I really would hate to lie to you, but I would I would say well over. 20 or 25 you know or maybe more you know we got california to new york to florida to south dakota minnesota pennsylvania i mean they're just like hawaii is our first one i think maybe maybe if we get her uh that's kind of my goal so get hawaii in here what is she competing she is a breakaway roper and a goat tire yeah okay. yeah Stop, yes since you are not under ncaa rules as i understand that you have your own organization do you have recruiting rules and things like that can't do and can't do as far as citizens and your students or as far as uh... it's not really honestly the only one major rule that we have is I mean we do have rules that like the one major rule we can't is nobody can actually sign before March 1st that um, now that's a Naira letter of intent okay um, so we try to wait and sign, you know, obviously wait after March 1st to sign everybody. We can get them committed just like, but no, not like, I mean, I sat through the coaches meetings at, at school there and listened to their NCAA rules that they go over. I'm thinking, oh boy, I'm glad I, I don't have anything like that because that, they got a lot of rules. And really, we that's about it. There's no, I mean, like if a kid transfers in from another university, um, uh, he has to sit out three rodeos, kind of like a, a football player would, or something a semester. Um, 
and if they come from a JUCO, if they have their associates or enough 48 hours or whatever, they just come right in and fall right in at a, you know, just like a transfer would as far as football or basketball. But uh, no, we don't have the real strict rules or it's not like, you know, like I, it's not like we would go out and pay kids to come to school here. You know, we wouldn't violate things. It's just not that big a deal. Like, well, you know, well, I mean, I, I'm thinking about some other rules, you know, talking to the kid who's already in the school. Right. No, I mean, you can. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, like an honor thing. Like, you don't try to go steal somebody else's player among coaches. Now, I'm sure yeah, that it isn't a rule that's on paper. That no, mm, no, there's there's really not a whole lot of rules underneath that recruitment form like we go talk to juco transfers you know and then kids come talk to us about transferring and i always go tell them look you need to let your coach know that you're talking to me but that's just a courtesy thing you know there's really no rules or within anything the, within our district or conference if a player comes from another school we compete against that was set so long it just depends on when they transfer you know, like if they transfer university to university, they have to miss three rodeos. So if you got a kid who's at Panhandle and fall the came here in the spring, he can't compete in the first three rodeos? First three rodeos, he would not be able to compete, yeah. So they they do, you know, that's one of the rules. I mean, that's kind of the major <coughs> rule. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's nothing like NCAA or anything like that. Might, might talk to him a little bit. And, you know, I mean, you have 80 competing. Right. But tell them how the team part works. Because not all 80 of those count towards no, points. No, no, they don't. As far as team wise, we get it. We get it. It's my choice, and uh, we may have 45 guys competing, right, in all events. But I have to pick six guys out to actually score points for us. Okay. Now they can score points individually for themselves, and that's how they base the rankings in each event. But team points. I have to pick those six guys out. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. You know, uh, in the women's side, it's four girls. Uh, so same deal. Forty-five girls competing. I've got to see. And and I've learned one thing. It's I don't know. It's you kind of you take your your top four girls. You know that you feel like you're going to do good, and you stick with them <laughs> because when you go to seems like me when I see coaches do it, they get to changing well this girl did good this week so we need to put her on the team um and then they miss and that other girl they took off or guy does good so you just you feel like these are your six top guys that could score the most points you know possible and you stick with you know and that's and it's really worked for us the women's uh we have two regional championships and two regional runner-ups the men's team we have a runner-up national championship so you know it's uh that but, but, but. If I understand it, it is it is very advantageous to have 80, 90, 100 people competing. Well, because they take points from the other. Exactly, team. that's a lot of defense. <laughs> yep, <laughs> the, you bet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I do. Well, you bet. I stress because that. You don't know that kid might have been 40 years <clears throat> on your list. All right. Of a he hit her that day. You he bet. That's it. Points. And and sometimes it might cost you team wise. He might finish better. You know, than you know, somebody you got on the team, but be that, that part of it. So, like in the steer wrestling, say for the Central Plains region, there's around 50, and um, we Northwestern we enter about 22 of them. You know, so we are advantageous in the steer wrestling, and we'll have usually six to seven to eight guys out of ten that make the short round. Which the rodeos consist of: you go, everybody keep competes in one long round, and then the top ten times come back to the short round and you compete again and then they take an aggregate they take them two times combined and that's the winner so it is advantageous you know and I stress that we you know we try to run a lot of defense you know that way but uh, that's that's advantageous now picking them sometimes is a little <laughs> unadvantageous but um, you know it's it's just that's why I tell them look at rodeo is an individual sport uh, and they do good for themselves and then that makes the team do good, you know, and that's the way that works. Uh, college rodeo is the only rodeo where there's a team oriented, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, but that's the only, only rodeo at any level that has a team sport, okay? And it's pretty neat, it's fun, it's fun for me, you know, because I, coaches, we get to compete as long as, you know, as well as the kids do, so with each other on the team wise, so, but, yeah. <clears throat> 
I would imagine that most of our student athletes are going to maybe for an ag degree. Oh, some, yeah. What I are mean, the other degrees that just. Well, there's. I mean, yeah, you bet. Like, uh, I've just had a criminal justice major in the other day, and uh, we've got several education majors, a lot of nursing majors, and a lot of ag majors, business majors. I mean, yeah, mass comm, a lot of mass comm. So, just about every one of them. You got that many of them, you got that many, that many majors. I think yeah, a lot of good students. Yep. I think the nursing would be kind of tough on them sometimes. It does, and, and with the rodeo. Towards the later, their later years, yeah. you know, when they got to go do the clinicals and stuff, and that's something I work with, you know, uh, this, and I tell them that when they come in, and I think they understand that most of the nursing majors, that towards their fourth year, their senior year, they're probably not going to get to go to all the rodeos, but, you know, I'll be, that's fine, you know, I mean, they're trying to get their degree. And, Further their career in nursing and everything, so I mean that's perfectly okay. Um, so that's uh, it. The nursing is a little tougher on them. They, I mean, it, you can see it. Stockton, is it is is the is the radio like a lot of things when you become a name and a reputation? They find you. It, 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 you know, a lot of regard, and, and I'm thinking about two areas that just kind of jump at. Me. You probably have a hard time getting rough stock riders away from Goodwill. Right. And they probably have a hard time getting a steer wrestler away from you. Right, exactly. And that's, that's yes. And that that's exactly right. Um, and we don't discourage rough stock riders. I bring them in, but, I, you know, uh, we buck horses and bulls, you know, when we when we have rough stock riders. But I can understand, like, if you were in a rough stock position, you would go to Panhandle where, you know, to ride rough stock. But a time, you know, on the other side, you would come here to be a timed event school, you know, if you're a timed event. And it does, like, it, it helps a lot in the recruitment process. Like, just, yes. Uh, does your program own any of the livestock or do the, the uh, students own all that individually? They own their own horses, um, and they're, they're responsible for their travel. We give travel money. Um, as far as steers, no, we lease and we lease all the rope and cow and team rope and bulldog and calf rope. Um, we lease them each semester, okay. so uh, <coughs> no, they don't own. But that we practice on at the cell barn. Okay? okay. Now several kids live around town in houses, which you guys know. Probably some of them might be some of your renters. They live in houses with facilities, and they practice at those facilities. And I don't have any problem with that. Um, we. Uh, we have enough jackpots and matches and stuff up there at the cell barn that I get to watch them rope and bulldog or whatever every week. So it's not like I don't ever see them. But um, they, a lot, of, not a lot, but quite a few of them have their own facility and practice and, you know, on the weekends and stuff. Because we just practice Monday through Friday. And if they're not going to a rodeo on the weekend, they're usually practicing then. So, but, why? Well, Stop in one more question. Yep. You have a daughter, Sequin. Yep. Three years old. Yep. How old was she when you first put her up on a horse? Oh, uh, she was less than a year. But I mean, I <laughs> held on. To her. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I got an old bulldog and horse up there. That he's 24, and he don't. He just kind of mopes around, and I'll put her up there. She rides him now, but she was less than a year probably before she got on a horse, but. Uh, I don't Gus, he's I have a son that's eight months and I think he's I know he's been on a horse with me, so <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. uh, but how many hours a week would it typical breeder person work out or what do you train or I tell you what whatever. How many hours a week? If you include taking care of your livestock, you know, the feeding and the exercising of that and then yourself and you know it's a it's a full day you know but between class that's what i'd like people to understand between classes and then they work too and practice and feed and take care of those livestock it's a full day for those guys like i mean from you know their first class at eight in the morning till in the summertime at nine o'clock at night when the sun goes down you know i, I practicing we pra we start at three o'clock and we usually practice till dark you know, when you know when it usually gets dark about six, six thirty. You know, when we're practicing seven. Um, but uh, so I would say three or four hours a day, and we practice every day. You know, whether they do one event each day or whatever, 
uh, but we do practice every day. Uh, but that's what, it's not like football or basketball where you got a two to four practice and then your lunch, dinner, and then study hall. You know what I mean? Like you, they're, when they get done with practice, they go put their horses up, feed everything, clean stalls, everything like that, and then back, you know, home, study, and whatever. So it, it's a great thing, though. It keeps them busy, and I like that. Yep, yep. Keep, I like to keep them busy. So, yep, and, that, and that's a good busy right there. So, yep. Well, thank you, Stockton. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Yep.